a cherished me in childhood. There is no place for old age women's love. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Solution for humanity. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode in the series Dawah Ilallah. Today we are continuing with our series Dawah Ilallah and we are looking at how to be effective da'is and how we can call people to submission to the one true God, to Allah. And this is the main reason that we as Muslims have decided that we want to get involved in the work of calling people to Islam because we've realized that people need to understand who Allah is. It's not because we have decided that, you know, we want to become popular or we want people to look at us in a special way. We do this simply for the sake of Allah. It is not a name, claim and fame reason that we're getting involved in Dawah. We're doing Dawah for the sake of Allah. Even if no one hears or no one sees you doing it. So we're looking at some of the characteristics that are required for the manners of a da'i. And we said one of the things that a da'i needs to have is he has to have very good manners. He has to have very good behavior. And this is what we find in Abu Dawud, who actually narrates, and I'll be pleased with him, that the Prophet ﷺ is quoted to have said, those believers are perfect in faith who have good manners. Those who have good manners are perfect in faith. And this is how we need to respect and learn the manners and customs of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This is why it's important that we learn how to even eat our food in the way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us. Have you been to some of those tables? And you can hear them a mile away when they're eating. Their mouth is smacking and they're burping and they're doing all sorts of other things while they're eating food. We've been taught on how to eat food even, how we must do it slow, small amounts at a time, chewing slowly, not going big noisy mouthfuls. We must have manners so that people will look at us and say, that's the type of person I want to be. Not just when they see us praying, but when they see us doing general things. What about simple things that the way that we use our hands, how we do different things during the day with our hands. Sometimes we, you know, we see a brother and he forgets that he's supposed to be drinking with his right hand and we see him drinking with his left hand or eating with his left hand and we freak out and we say, hum, right across the place. Maybe just go up to him gently and say, brother, I know you did it by mistake. Let me just help you and correct you in a nice way. And yet we forget that many of us still have our watches on our left hand. Yet we're worried about somebody eating with their left hand and drinking with their left hand and you're giving shaitan all your time. So take your watches, if they're on your left hand, put them on your right hand. Remember the right hand is belonging to Allah. 
Your wedding ring, where is it sitting? If you have one on, mustn't be on your left hand, must be on your right hand. Things that belong to Allah that are precious to you, time is precious, put on your right hand. Eat with your right hand. Your marriage should be on your right hand. Don't put things on your left hand. The left hand is only for one purpose. And it's got nothing to do with anything else. So leave everything else off it, if possible. Okay. So it's a small thing. So there's no big fatwa I'm giving you about this now, about watches and rings and things. But think about it. It belongs to Allah, your time. So you're conscious every time it's on your hand that this belongs to Allah. This time that I have on earth belongs to Allah. When it's on your left hand, you don't remember it because you're hardly using this. This is the one you're using all the time. So the whole time you're constantly reminded, my time belongs to Allah. Some people, if they want to laugh at you and they say, but you, you're not left-handed, what? Say it doesn't matter. My time belongs to Allah. That's why I put it there. It's a reminder for me. It's not for the rest of the world. It's there for me to remember it belongs to Allah. You're going to wear rings or you want to wear rings. Some cultures, they like to wear rings. You're going to wear rings and you're male, put on your right hand, put on your left hand. Keep everything off your left hand. Unless it's got a haram purpose, then you can leave it on your left hand. If it's some magic thing, nonsense to do with magic or whatever, then you can wear it on your left hand because that, that's already belongs to shaitan anyway. So if it's got something with a good purpose and a good meaning and it's going to bring you closer to Allah, everything on the right. They even call Satanism the left-handed way. That's what they call it. If you speak to a Satanist and you say to him, what is Satan? We say, no, it's the left-handed way. Do you know that? So everything to do with shaitan is the left-handed way. That's why you'll find they do things the opposite to whatever the believer does, to make a joke of the believer. So it's a left-handed way. So we're moving towards the right-handed way. The next most important quality or requirement that a da'i is required to have, other than good manners, which we already spoke about last week a lot, is knowledge. Now this knowledge that we are talking about is a decent working knowledge, not a PhD level knowledge. It would be better if he has a PhD knowledge. It would be better if you're a graduate from Medina. It would be better if you're a graduate from an Islamic institution, but not all of us can go there some of us reverted later in life, whatever it might be, whatever reason there is. But you must have a decent knowledge, not only of Islam and the sciences of Islam and the Quran and the Hadith and the history of Islam and the literature of Islam, but you also need to know other information as well, like sociology. What are the social welfare issues in society and Islam? What are the legal ramifications? You should know the laws of your country. You should read a legal book. You should be, when they see you coming into the bookshop, they should have a big smile on their face because they know you're the guy who takes books on every single subject. I have a card where you buy books. It's like a discount card. They gave me a discount card because I buy so many books. And so I've got books on history, geography, science, mathematics, biology, politics, economics, everything, because you need to know everything. One of the greatest books that we're going to be looking at on how to be an effective day that's not found in Islam is a book on economics. We're going to be dealing with it. It's a book for economic students that will help you to be effective in your dawah, even though it's not a book on Islam. But the techniques that they use for problem solving in economics, it's perfect fit. When I looked at it, I thought, wow, this man should be a Muslim writer. So some of the books that we find that will help us to be effective in the work of Dawa are found in books of economics, maybe books of biology, because we need all these avenues when looking at Islam and our knowledge base. We need to know what's happening in, in the sciences, what's happening in current affairs. We should be reading a newspaper at least if we're not watching a television news. At least get the headlines of the newspaper so you know what's going on. You're going to get phone calls. I get phone calls in South Africa from a journalist. I get phone calls from the media. I get phone calls from CNN. I get phone calls from Sky News. And they ask me to comment on something that just happened. If I don't know, I'm going to go, uh, I don't know. You have to ask someone else. I don't even know. What? Huh? Who? Obama who? Oh, he was a president of America. How long? Oh, eight years. I didn't know that. We have to know what's happening. We need to know who the presidents are of the major countries in the world of India, of Pakistan. We need to know who's in charge of Palestine. We need to know who's in America and Britain. Those are the main ones we need to know. 
The other ones you can find out whatever. But those are the main ones you need to know because those are the hot issues of the day. No one's going to ask you and say, what do you think about what happened in Tanzania? And first you're going to say, what's that? Is sweet chocolate? Tanzania. I know where it is because I live there, but most people in the world won't know where Tanzania is. So if they ask me, like, I do a program for Bermuda, Bermuda, the island, you know where the Bermuda Triangle is? And when somebody asked me and said, would you like to do a program for Bermuda Radio? I thought it was Bermuda Shorts. I didn't know it was a country Bermuda. I thought it was a, a, just a legacy. I thought it was like a, a myth. So we need to gain an education of general stuff. Have a map in your home. Get a decent size, not one of those little Google Maps. Get a nice, decent sized map. Have it on your wall. When a scholar comes and speaks, maybe you found him on the internet, maybe you saw him on Peace TV, whatever. Get a little pin, make a little flag, maybe a green, yellow, red, blue. Pin it in where he comes from. It'll help you get a geographical understanding of what's happening throughout the world. And you know what? Someone is going to come to you and they're going to say, I come from Brazil. And you can go to your map and you can see green, okay, that guy's from Brazil. And you'll be able to refer him. You're going to meet people from all over the world. So make sure that you get a decent understanding of geography, history, biology, sciences. You don't have to go to the depth where you're like taking out fourth year medical student book. But at least get a basic broad idea, maybe first year medicine, maybe first year whatever. My father, when I grew up, he made us learn everything, literally made us do everything. How to do carpentry, how to do mechanics, how to do fittering, turning, all the trades. And then after we had done that, like the basics of everything, then he wanted us to learn how to like work the land, how to lay plumbing, everything. Seriously, he made us do everything. And we hated it. But today it's beneficial to me because I don't have to phone a plumber or phone an electrician or phone a mechanic, I can do it myself. So I'm saving myself money. But at the end of the day, it also gave me a, a way to connect with all these different people. So when I talk to a plumber, I can speak to him about terms that he only knows about. And everyone else in the conversation looks like dum-dums because it looks like we're the two smart ones. It means I only know the basics. Do you understand why it's important? When I speak to a carpenter and I talk about dovetail joints and T joints, he goes, ooh, this guy knows what he's talking about. You see, it helps your dawah because you connect with that person. Not that you're trying to use it in an arrogance, but it helps you gain more knowledge. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Peace TV presents over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam. 
With credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. One and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way, it's the simple way. Remind ish The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in peacemakers, Next on Peace TV. You don't want to be in one of those conversations where you're talking to people and your whole table of 30 people and they've invited you to this function and you're the only one who doesn't know what's going on. Have you been in those tables? I've been in one of those. I've seen many times at those tables where you're sitting there, everyone's talking and you're going, why am I here? And you got invited because you're the religious guy of the group. All the rest are just like whatever. And they brought you there to do a talk or whatever, but they're talking and you don't know what they're talking about. So you don't want to be in that situation. You now must go figure out. If you get invited and you get a phone call and they ask you to come to a group meeting and it's a meeting on banking, the banking system, Sharia banking, and you've been invited, maybe it's not even about Sharia bank, maybe it's just secular banking. You need to be on the computer that whole night and figure out as much terminology as you can get into your cranium in a short amount of time before you go to that meeting. So you at least have the terminologies done. You never go to a place unprepared. If you get invited to go to Germany, you need to learn five or six phrases in German before you even get there. Not how are you. Different things. Some things like thank you very much, how are you today? No, you don't have to do that for me. Things like that that are deeper than just guten Tag. You know what I mean? So you must learn a little bit about the culture. Find out where you are going. What is the majority of the people? Are the people the majority there? Learned people. Are they poorer people? Are they middle income? Find out a bit of history of the place. Get an idea of the culture that you're going to go into. What are you not allowed to do? What are you allowed to do? How many women will be there? How many men will be there? Will there be a separation between the two? You can't write the rules because you've been a guest. But at least you get an idea of what to expect. You don't want to walk in there, and it's happened to me before when I didn't prepare before. You go there, and you prepare this whole talk and this whole lecture, and you expect to see a whole lot of non-Muslims, and guess what? There's not a single non-Muslim. They're all Muslims. And so you prepare a talk on how to pull people to Islam from outside of Islam. And so if you're talking to a whole lot of Muslim scholars, you look like a dumb dumb. So you have to know the information. Or preparing a talk for men, and you get there and it's only woman. And now you got, now what do I do? So you got to have the right information. So the requirement of a da'i is to have knowledge. Preparation knowledge is just as important as having knowledge in your head. So always inquire. Doesn't matter if you've been invited and it's the first time you've been invited, you need to ask questions. Where am I going to stay? Who's going to meet me at the airport? What time am I going to be there? When does my first talk start? What am I required to talk about? How many lectures am I actually going to be giving? And what am I expected to give? Because sometimes those two tallies don't match up. You'll get an email that says you only have to do 30 lectures. And when you actually get there, you're required to do 200 lectures. So this information is very important that you find out before you go. So if you're going to do a two-day talk, don't land up getting there. And you've only prepared for two talks and you land up having to do six talks. So it's all important. Black and white information is important. You must be organized. Just because you live by inshallah doesn't mean you don't organize. You still organize. You still require to have organizational skills. And this is what we'll do inshallah when we go to the different topics as we get to that later inshallah. So understanding the deen of Islam and how to teach it to a non-Muslim is something that is very, very important. And it is something that we all have to learn. We can't wing it. You know what they mean by winging it? You get there and hope everything's just going to work out. 
you have to have preparation. If you're going to call people to the Deen of Islam, you have to have some knowledge about it. You might not know everything, but you need to know what you're going to be talking about, at least. So the Dai must try as much as possible to gain as much knowledge as he can and to seek the favor of Allah in gaining this knowledge. He's not gaining it to show how intelligent he is, but he's gaining it so he has a greater understanding of the Deen of Allah and that he can help other people um, come to that same knowledge. In the 12th chapter of the Quran, in verse 108, it says, Say, this is my way. I invite unto Allah with sure knowledge. And I and those who follow after me, it continues to say. So we need to invite to people with a sure knowledge. Remember, sure is very, very important in Islam. We need to have a sure foundation of what we're building. We need to have surety in everything that we are teaching. And we have to have a sure knowledge. That's very, very important. A da'i must know what he is calling to. He mustn't be uncertain. One week you ask him, are you required to pray five times a day? And he says yes. And the next time he says no. He must have knowledge that is built on what is actually accepted. He mustn't keep changing his mind and jumping back and forth. This will create confusion. Preferably don't introduce people into different schools of thought. It just creates confusion. When you're calling a person to Islam, call them to Allah. Call them to the Quran, call them to the Prophet, as we've given you the formula before. There's no need to be explaining schools of thoughts within Islam. That's they're only going to learn much, much later when it's required. Not at this point, if it's required. So you might not even get to that point for maybe a year or two years. When I became a Muslim, it was after the third year that I was introduced to such a thing as schools of thought within Islam. Because it was far more important for me to know all the other things. When I went to pray, they just said, put your hands like this. They didn't say, according to the Hanafi or Shafi, they just said, put your hands like this. No need to say where it came from. Later, I even corrected because I chose with more knowledge, I realized that it's not the right way to hold my hands. Do you understand? So it's far more important that they learn to love Islam, that they learn the basics and learning who taught it. And it was only the third year that somebody actually said to me, so what school of thought do you follow us? I'm like, huh? What does that mean? <laughs> what school of thought? I thought he was talking about like some karate thing or something. Maybe like are you in judo or karate or something. Or like Shuta Khan. And he looks at me and he said, what, what school is that? I said, well, karate. And I literally did. When he said, what school of thoughts? I thought like karate. And I said, Shuta Khan. Because that was the karate I did. And then he said, no, what Islamic school of thought? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. You have to explain that to me. And he explained it to me and I go, so sometimes it's better just to let Allah do the work with a person. You teach them whatever way you were taught to pray, that's the way you teach them. Whatever way you were taught to do things, that's the way you teach them. So don't create confusion in the person. As they mature in Islam, they will probably change. If it's something they don't like, they will change on their own. You give them the options at the end of the day. Once they matured as a Muslim, my brother and myself pray totally different. We both have different ways of doing it. So it would be preferable if he did it the same way as me, but he's not at that point yet. So inshallah, when he's ready, he will do it. So each person must make sure that he is following the deen of Islam in the most authentic way possible, and that he's teaching it in the most authentic way without causing any deviations and causing people to become unsure of what they're doing. So this is why we need to have a sure knowledge. It's confidence in what we are teaching people. It's better to research everything before you start teaching people anything. Don't like, as you're going along, try and like learn it as you're going along when you're teaching someone to pray. If you don't know how to teach someone to pray, don't teach them to pray. Uh, rather send somebody else who does. There's nothing wrong with referring. A doctor, you go to your GP, your, your GP checks you out, he refers you to a specialist. The specialist refers you to a surgeon. The surgeon may refer you to a second surgeon for two different operations done by two different people. So it's called referral. In the same way, we as Muslims must do the same. I have a team of three brothers in South Africa. One is good on Quran, one is good on Hadith, one is good on Arabic. And so each one refer them to those different departments. So if I want someone to give them proper Arabic classes, even though the others can all do it, I know this guy's better. And so I send them to that scholar. I know all three of them know just as much about the hadith, but this one's better in my view. So we refer them to those guys. Distribute them. 
I have my students literally running over all over town. So they come for classes at the one man, then after that they go and they go to the other man for another hour, then they go to the other side of town to another man for another hour, then they come back to me. So they move around town. Why should I do it all myself? I don't know all that. Rather let them get the best of, of everything. Let them have the best of all the different teachers. So don't try and hold it all for yourself or hog it all for yourself and try to make disciples because this is a very, 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 very dangerous thing. There seems to be this whole thing going on in the world today where people are trying to make disciples. And you see them walking into the mosque and they've got a guy carrying his shoes and they've got a guy carrying his bag and another guy fanning him as he's walking. And it can be dangerous because it's very, very dangerous for that scholar because he can start becoming arrogant and thinking himself more important than he actually is. So try to keep a balance on that. Don't go to extremes in your religion. Be very cautious of that. So to protect the scholar and to protect yourself if you're doing dawah, refer. To make sure that you're using other people to teach. And work together and realize that you're a team, that you're working as an ummah. It's not a one-man show. It's not about one person. And don't lift one person up. You know, I get a lot of celebrities and I get a lot of film stars and I get a lot of actors contacting me because there are very few European Muslims in the limelight, you know, that they get television time. So you get people referring those people to you. I've got to be very, very cautious that I don't just become a typecast, you know. You just stay with that type of people. You know, you go, I'm going to hang with the celebrities and do my dawah amongst... No, I must do dawah to that person who packs bags at the shopping center, the person who sweeps the street. You must make sure you don't become... You know, I'm too good to do dawah to that person. You do dawah to everybody. You know, sometimes we get invited to speak in countries and we give them a whole list of requirements. We send them this whole, like, ten-page thing. Unless you meet these needs, I cannot come. You know, sometimes you must just go, even if there's nothing. Even if I was invited to Pakistan, and in Pakistan I'm going to be living in somebody's, like, little one-bedroom house, a little one-bedroom flat. There's no fancy hotels, there's no fancy meals. There's no fancy drivers. We're literally going to be walking from point A to B. You need to keep that balance. You see what I mean? We must be cautious as Muslims that we don't get to that celebrity feeling. There's no celebrity Muslims. We are all brothers one to the other. There's no hierarchy. You respect the scholars. You show respect to the scholars. But he's a human just like you and I. So we must help him not to be pushed into an area where it could be dangerous for him. That's all the time we have for this week, so you're going to have to join us again, same place, same time. So we continue with the series, Dawa Ilah. So make sure you join us again. So for me, Arif Islam, and those in the audience, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B15 1TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49 ARAY. 3000830113201 sort code 30